am I listening to here? It's the 21st century. This was like going back 100 years to when women just had the vote. I could not believe it. You know, and women make up almost half of the workforce. And yet, these are the two women in government who are meant to be representing fe the female population. I was disgusted, to be perfectly honest. You go get them, girl. Well, hello there. And I do hope you're all well. Now, shall we watch the superb Carol Vorderman and her fantastic rinsing of this uncaring, uncompassionate government? Now, when our spaffer was getting his backside kicked from all corners in his privilege committee meeting, our very own Countdown Carol Vorderman was invited to a Women and Equalities Committee meeting to discuss menopause at the workplace, where she told the chair of the select committee meeting, Caroline Noakes, what she thought about certain members of this government who are supposed to represent women, but in her eyes, are not. You'll know that we did a significant report published in July of last year uh, where we made a number of recommendations to government, many of which were either only partly accepted or rejected, and the response itself was three and a half months late. Can I start with you, Carol, and just ask how you would characterise uh, the government's response and whether you feel that they were taking it seriously? Um, well, the fact that it, you've just said it was three and a half months late, I think, characterises it. Uh, entirely that you know there are a few facts that we need to begin with the fact is that women need to be supported more when they go through menopausal years the other fact menopausal years can be very difficult and uh, detrimentally life-changing for a large number of women and also nearly 16 million women are at work at the moment and yet <coughs> Maria uh, Caulfield can't be bothered to turn up She's refused your request to turn up today. And worse than that, when confronted with this, I have to admit I was doing a little uh, active work on Twitter yesterday, she said that she'd written a letter to you with alternative dates a week ago. She was very specific about that and replied to me yesterday when I said that she'd refused to come in, that she said, absolutely not true. And then ha uh, we found, had deleted all of that from Twitter later and and also i was horrified when i was watching kemi badenoch uh, the minister for uh, uh, women and, and equalities a number of weeks ago when you were questioning her carolyn and um i just couldn't i, I could not as a woman a postmenopausal woman who was from a working class background get over the patronizing statements that she made i thought they were insulting they're insulting to all women. She, she basically said uh, to, to Carolyn, this was a left-wing issue when we were talking about menopause and a pilot in the workplace, and characteristically compared women going through terrible, terrible menopausal symptoms with those uh, who would want um, to uh, have uh, uh, certain things that are given by government to those with ginger hair, to short people. I mean, it was just, what am I listening to here? It's the 21st century. This was like going back 100 years to when women just had the vote. I could not believe it. You know, and women make up almost half of the workforce. And yet, these are the two women in government who are meant to be representing fe the female population. I was disgusted, to be perfectly honest, by both of them. Absolutely disgusted. And we have always made it very clear that we intended to follow up the work and the report and ask ministers questions about why they had dismissed out of hand the prospect of a consultation on uh, the Equalities Act or a trial of menopause workplace leave. Can I just ask, when it comes to menopause workplace leave, have you had any sense from the many thousands of menopausal women who I know will have reached out to you that they think that a trial of leave would in any way be forcing them out of work, or would it perhaps be giving them a mechanism to find ways to stay in? I think, I mean, I, we have to have a trial. It has to be on a large scale if anything is going to change. I mean, everybody sitting here knows the data uh, about the number of women who are leaving work. That's at the, the, the far end. There are those, you know, I was on ITVs this morning, this morning, 
uh, and that we were inundated with women saying about the issues that they have in the workplace. Interestingly, many of them didn't want to give their place of work because they were concerned about any retribution that might take place. From the very simple example, which would be, I'm going through hot sweats for a number of years, I find it really uncomfortable. Not only that, I'm anxious, uh, tending towards depression, and I find the brain fog, and I just wanted a fan on my mm. table, on my desk. But there's a tidy desk policy, so I can't have a fan on the desk. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And we should call it out for being ridiculous. Mm. Uh, that was down at the mild end. And then others who, many others who've been harassed, who've been bullied, who've been mocked. Oh, look at you. This was something that was going on 10 years ago when... You know, on television, we used to have to sort of apologise almost for having a menopausal moment, as it might be said. We go, oh, silly me! Oh gosh, mm. I'm having, oh, I'm having a bit of a flush. Oh, silly me! Well, not any longer. Not any longer. We don't have to do that. This can't go back in the box. Sometimes it's characterised that there are a lot of ho very high-profile women who are now prepared to talk about this openly and highlight their own menopausal symptoms, their own experience in work. And sometimes that gets characterised as that this is uh, a problem for the middle classes, that it's only those who have uh, the ability to speak out who do, and that actually... What, what's your response to that? How is it affecting women from ordinary working backgrounds? Well, from the response that we had on ITV this morning, uh, on social media, it, that is absolutely and categorically wrong. And it, perhaps it is middle class women and those with a profile who can have the ability, we are here today, to speak out. But, you know, there are so many women in the gig economy. There are women at the moment who are struggling to make, make ends meet. There are women who aren't earning a lot of money. They are going through a cost of living crisis. They're worried about their children and their education. They're worried about energy bills. They're, they might be single mothers. For them to then challenge their place of work because they're saying, I need help, and that place of work saying, sorry, love, mm. we'll get a new one in. Mm. It's impossible for them, and they're the women who don't have a voice, and that's why the select committee and the work that you're doing is very important, and the work that Menopause Mandate is, is doing, um, and, 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 and Karen is doing. For, I mean, it, it's, it's critical. I think we're at a critical mass. That Jeremy Hunt last week, you know, we, we talked about the budget, and we want more people to stay in the workplace, Really? Then why aren't your ministers here answering the select committee's questions? Why? Where are they? Maria Caulfield was having a cup of tea when we were having lunch over in Portcullis House. That's not much of an example, is it? I wasn't she amazing. I wanted to do this earlier, but when you haven't uh, come through our Spafford Johnson and his privileged committee meeting circuit, it's a bit difficult to get away from it. But I just love the way she talked about Kemi Badenoch and Maria Caulfield, who have clearly given off that whiff of being uncaring and uninterested. And when she also spoke about other women's stories, it just goes to show you that even in this day and age, we have a long way to go, don't we? Show sure that in the workplace, the menopause still isn't taken seriously, is it? A bit shameful. But what do you guys think? Right, in the next video... Don't worry, this is the last buffer video in his privileged committee being it, but it's just an interesting side one that I just wanted to show. So I just wanted to put this one first, you know, break him up a little bit, just too much of spaffer, it's just not good for the health, is it? <laughs> anyway, I shall leave the video here, and until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.